Zeynep Jaffrey from season 3 of Love is Blind has stirred up a lot of controversy. However, most people commenting on her have failed to understand what was actually driving her behaviour. Zeynep is an example of what is variously labelled as a vulnerable, covert, or mid-range narcissist. There's a misconception that all narcissists are loud, brash, in-your-face, alpha personalities. However, that's just one type of narcissist. There are also more sulky, passive-aggressive, self-pitying narcissists like Zeynep. I'll point out the numerous red flags she demonstrates and explain why they're red flags. I'll be using HG Tudor's system for identifying and analysing narcissists. I'm a cute little flight attendant if you ever see me on a plane. This shows grandiosity. Now we certainly couldn't determine Zeneb was a narcissist from a statement like this alone, and it's possible that a non-narcissist would call themselves a cute little flight attendant. Having self-esteem and thinking you're attractive is a good thing. However, narcissists are completely deluded about certain elements of themselves. This could be something like their attractiveness, their intelligence, or their job performance. It depends on the narcissist. Their deluded sense of self-worth is revealed over time as they repeatedly make grandiose and haughty statements. This one statement is just a small piece of the puzzle. However, you'll see how Zeneb makes grandiose statements again and again and again which reveal her. But um, I don't really get approached. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't get hit on back home. I don't get hit on um, on the plane. This is a pity play. Narcissists subconsciously seek two things above everything else, control over others and fuel, which is the emotional output of others towards things they say or do. The type of narcissist Zeneb is frequently uses pity plays to manipulate others into giving them sympathy. This is because it gives the narcissist control over the sympathetic listeners and fuel from their compassionate reactions. Of course, this is just another single indicator for Zeneb, it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility that a non-narcissist would say something like this. We have to build up a picture over a large range of behaviours over a period of time. Love is Blind has 15 single men and 15 single women. They each go into a pod where they can hear but not see a member of the opposite sex. They speed date different people in the pods and then go on different dates with people they have a connection with. I don't think I'm anywhere up near this guy's top, and I definitely want to be. I have absolutely had a checklist. Height, no kids, no smoker. Those check boxes and what I've been doing outside of here has obviously not worked for me. <laughs> Unapologetically picky as fuck over here. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here so I have some yeah. privacy. Having dating preferences is perfectly normal. However, Zeneb conveys hers in an entitled and grandiose way. She reels off a list of requirements her partner has to have, then labels herself as unapologetically picky as fuck over here. In addition, Zeneb has a haughty demeanour when she's talking to other people. She sounds like she thinks she's better than everybody else. You may think I'm being overly harsh here, but if you've dealt with this type of narcissist before, the haughty tone will stick out to you like a flashing red light. Watch this clip again and see if you can hear it. I'm gonna go over here so I have some privacy. Zeneb meets a man named Cole and they start to get to know each other. I've skipped to their second conversation because their first conversation is fairly mundane. Hello. Hi. Hi, Zeneb. Oh my god! You have such a cute voice, by the way. Just like bonus points, I can do a British accent too. I'm from England. Damn. <laughs> you would be a blast to live with. I am a blast. Grandiosity. Zeneb goes on to tell Cole about how her father died when she was 13 and her mother died when she was 18. Cole and Zeneb seem to bond over this. You just hit like every major category of awesomeness in my book. Game changer. Game changer. I won't lie, I'm grade A top choice beef over here. Grandiosity. Zeneb and Cole continue to get closer during more dates. I think... I think I'm falling in love with you. I think I'm falling in love with you too. In Love is Blind, if a couple feels ready, they move on to a marriage proposal. Will you marry me? 
Oh, I don't care what you look like. I would love to be your wife. Really? Yes. The really like old, dark side of me wants to say like I don't even deserve to feel this good and just feel this happy. But like, I, I know I do deserve it. I feel stupidly happy. <laughs> oh, I know I'm crying, but I'm happy. When Zeneb says the old dark side of her wants to say she doesn't deserve to feel good, this is a pity play, a manipulation to elicit sympathy and therefore control and fuel. But it's fake insecurity. As we've already started to see, and will continue to see, Zeneb holds herself in extremely high esteem. Many people think that narcissists, especially so-called vulnerable or covert narcissists, are deeply insecure. This is wrong. Narcissists have an enormous sense of superiority. This allows them to go through life with sky-high entitlement, trampling over other people's boundaries and refusing to take responsibility for their own actions. It allows them to control others to the fullest extent. If they suddenly started feeling genuine self-doubt and introspection, it would slow them down too much. Fake insecurity and pity plays are just devices narcissists use to assert control and draw fuel from others, in the same way that some narcissists might use charm, bullying or love bombing. Now, a narcissist could certainly feel anger at the world for not recognising their greatness, and unaware narcissists believe that the emotions they feel are insecurity because they don't know what real insecurity actually feels like. Now Zeneb and Cole meet each other in person for the first time. After this, they'll spend four weeks together to decide whether to go ahead with their marriage or not. The meeting goes well. Hi. Hi. You're beautiful. Thank you, I dressed up for you. <laughs> Zeneb and Cole go on a getaway to Malibu together. We skip forward to the next day after their first night together. I'm quite a sexual person, so sleeping with Cole for the first time felt great. I think in the ideal world with a fiance that you just got engaged to, you know, you'd wake up, you'd have a really sweet morning, like just a little, you know, coffee in bed, breakfast in bed, holding one another. Um, again, Cole just kind of rolled over and got right out of bed and then didn't really talk to me for a couple of hours. Based on the context of this clip, it looks like Zanab has been icy cold to Cole since he didn't talk to her when he first got up. This might seem like an overreaction unless you understand narcissism. Ignoring a narcissist wounds them, which is, quite simply, agonising for them. They don't have control over you and you aren't giving them any fuel. It makes them feel weak, vulnerable, powerless and unimportant. So Zena being this worked up shows a hypersensitivity to a threat to her control. Watch how cold she is towards him. What? I'm using the iron. Old school. Said Zay Marks Cole. Yeah, I got it. Zeneb is displaying what's known as cold fury. Her narcissism has sensed a threat to control from Cole and it needs to reassert control and gain fuel from him. Narcissists have black and white thinking. A person is either giving them control, in which case they're painted white and everything about them is viewed through a positive lens, or they're threatening the narcissist's control, so they're painted black and everything about them is viewed through a negative lens. Cole has suddenly switched from being painted white to being painted black. Zeneb is using cold, passive-aggressive manipulations, essentially giving him a mini-silent treatment and ignoring his act of affection, simply saying, yeah, I got it, and staring at him. In her mind she's punishing him, and it allows her narcissism to assert control and gain fuel from Cole when he displays hurt from his act of affection not being returned. This will go some way to repairing the wound he caused in ignoring her, Zeneb's behaviour shows hypocrisy and projection. Later on, she says that Cole was giving her a silent treatment, but this is exactly what she's doing to him right now. 
The interaction continues with more of the same, which I'll skip past, Xanab being cold towards Cole, eventually prompting him to ask her, you still actually care about me, right? Now we skip to when Xanab and Cole have left their hotel to do some supposedly fun couples activities. Zay, what are we fighting about in this moment? We're fighting over the difference, you can get them, between the word good and the word great. Oh, tell me more. This one doesn't seem to think there's a difference between good and great. Zay said, oh, we had such a great night. I said, it was so good. It was so, so good. It was good. And here we are in all this trouble because I didn't say great. I said good. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> semantic. If it was great. You crazy you little say. semantic stickler. Zeneb shows haughtiness again. She's patronizing and condescending when she says, this one doesn't seem to think there's a difference between good and great. Making a fuss over the word good shows a hypersensitivity to threats to control. When Cole described the night as good, Zeneb will have perceived this as a criticism of her, a threat to her control, and a narcissist must always have control. To Zeneb, Cole's saying that she isn't the best, he's criticizing her looks, her company, and her lovemaking abilities. So she uses a manipulation to reassert control over Cole and draw fuel from him, finding fault and nitpicking. It's a provocation. Her narcissism is looking to create a reaction, which means that she can gain fuel from Cole's exasperation and annoyance. In creating drama over Cole only describing the evening as good, Zeneb shows just how high her perception of herself is, which is, of course, grandiosity. It shows her sense of entitlement and her lack of boundaries in policing someone else's language and refusing to accept their opinion. They finally start doing some of the supposedly fun activities. All right, cornhole. You're gonna make it in the hole. I believe in this. Oh. Zay. What? At least it's make it look like you it. just you want to get it there. You know, like. Wow. How you gotta do it. Who knew this was such a sophisticated game? Okay. I can't with you and your little girly drink and you're like getting it all in there. <sighs> Even though it's just a fun garden game, Cole winning and teasing Zeneb for doing badly will threaten her sense of control. As a result, she asserts control over Cole and draws fuel from him by using sarcasm and mocking him. Wow, and who knew this was such a sophisticated game? This is also haughty. She then further mocks him by saying, I can't with your little girly drink. Midrange narcissists often use these little put downs, which almost seem like they're a joke. And if you call the narcissist out, they would undoubtedly claim that they are a joke and you're overreacting. But the things they say are mean and over months and years, it really chips away at the victim's self-esteem. Zeneb carries on in the same way for the rest of the games they play. Paddle, table, table. That was aggressive. Okay, like, why is that a thing? <laughs> I mean, you saw it sitting there. I've been getting very mixed signals from you. I don't necessarily feel like I have the best teacher for this game. More hypersensitivity to threats to her control. Zeneb manipulates Cole with accusations and blame shifting. This is her narcissism's way of rejecting accountability for losing. After the games, they discuss what married life could be like. Like, what do you think we could accomplish? Like, if we get married and go all the way with this thing? Um, you would flip something super amazing for us to live in. Facts. I would make it a home. Pod blankets. Pod blankets. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you want to, like, maybe pick up your towel sometime and maybe not, like, throw it across the coffee table. Did I do that? Yeah, or like on the floor, just like throw it across the sink or throw it across the tub. They're having a nice conversation about what their future house might be like, and seemingly out of nowhere, Zeneb hits Cole with an accusation of leaving his towel out. Presumably talking about their future house reminded her of this, and it's a threat to her sense of control. Remember, narcissists have an enormous sense of entitlement, which means that even the smallest thing can really put their back up. So Zeneb asserts control by bringing up the past and finding fault. Certain narcissists will use objects around the house as a way to control their victim, 
For example, watching over the victim's shoulder. Oh, please don't crinkle the sofa. Oh, please put the fork the right way round in the drawer. Can't you just fold the towel the right way? To the point that the victim walks on eggshells around their own home, just waiting for the next criticism to come flying at them. The fact that Cole has been living with Zeneb for less than a day at this point, and she's already criticising his behaviours and trying to change him, should be a huge red flag. It's a boundary transgression. And Zeneb brings it up in a haughty, passive-aggressive way, rather than in a constructive way. I mean, if you want to maybe pick up your towel sometime and maybe not throw it across the table. Are you being passive-aggressive? Mm -mm. Okay, let's check in. Denial the narcissist's first line of defense when accused of something. It shows her lack of accountability. Accepting wrongdoing when being challenged like this would mean giving away control. So we gotta be honest with each other and nip it in bud. Like me telling you that you're passive aggressive all the time. Exactly, day, like day two, give it to me. <laughs> I will try to have it fixed by like maybe day four. Future faking and promised change. Unaware narcissists need to control in the moment. In order to do this, they often say they'll do certain things in the future. For example, I'll change. Whether they actually follow through on these promises depends on whether it benefits them in the future. If there's no benefit to them at that point, their sense of entitlement and lack of accountability allow them simply to not follow through on their promises. As you'll see, Zeneb doesn't work on her passive aggression despite this conversation. In fact, she gets worse. This wraps up part one of the analysis. Please subscribe to my channel for future parts.